Hello guys, it's Exa and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing another fun craft project, this time involving rhinestones. If you've watched some of my videos before, then you should know that I love everything rhinestones and glitter and sequins and pink and girly and glitzy and... So I've done a few projects where I've taken some really stained designer shoes, generally in a patent leather, um, that are a darker color, so I can't dye over them and I can't get the stains out because they are patent leather, that I decided I was just going to cover them in crystals. So I have a few pairs of Louboutins that I've done that to, and I absolutely adore them. I get so many compliments, and they just sparkle and shine, and I feel like such a princess. So I thought, well, but I don't have any rhinestone boots. I do have a pair of sequin boots, but I don't have any ones with rhinestones. So for today's project, we are going to be taking these Ralph Lauren collection booties that I picked up in this lovely red suede color and completely covering them in some red crystals. I have a feeling this is going to take me a really long time, so we should probably get started right away. So, for this project, we're going to need, obviously, whatever you want to cover in your crystals, which for me is these boots, and your crystals. Again, I end up getting about 10,000 stones in a 4mm size for these boots. Um, I have a feeling I'll probably have extras, but it's always better to have more than you need than less than you need. So, for a point of reference, for a pair of pointed toe stiletto heels, I used about 3,000 rhinestones between the two shoes. So for this one, I'm guessing I'm probably going to need seven or 8,000, but I figured you might as well just get 10, and fingers crossed, we will have enough. To attach them, we are going to need some E6000 glue. This stuff is fantastic. It adheres really well. It actually kind of makes the boots waterproof, because, um, you know, you're completely coating them in it, so it's super great. They hold up really well. I think on my heels, I wear all the time. I've probably lost maybe three rhinestones, but that's honestly because I, like, smacked one of my heels into the other one and it knocked a few off. So that's great. And then to attach them you're going to need one of those little rubbery pen things. A lot of times when you buy sets of rhinestones that comes with them, or I just use a pair of tweezers and if I get a little bit of glue on the tip then it does the same sort of sticky motion. I don't know, for some reason I just don't like the little pen things. The last thing you're going to need is something that you can spread the glue around on your surface. So for me, I'm just going to use some Q-tips, but you could really use Q-tips or toothpicks or little skewer things or, um, or some popsicle sticks. Anything like that would work perfectly fine. I mean, you could use your fingers too, but then they get a little sticky and gross, so Q-tips work for me. Alright guys, so I'm actually filming this little segment here at the end after I've completed the whole project to show you how many rhinestones I actually ended up using for this project. I did in fact not have enough red, so it really worked out that I had the black stones and I used those for half of the boots because I wouldn't have had enough red rhinestones. So let me show you how many stones I started with and how many I ended up with. Alright guys, so here's how the rhinestones come that I bought. Um, they come in packs of 5,000, so this is 5,000 black stones that I ended up not using. Um, and here's how many black stones I ended up with at the end, which it's kind of hard to see in this picture, I'm sorry. but it's actually about half of that. So I used about 2,500 black rhinestones for the top parts of the boots. And I had 10,000 red rhinestones. And I'd say I pretty much used all of them. So if you were estimating off of boots about the same height around the ankle that mine are, you're totally going to need more like 12, 13,000 rhinestones to do this project. First thing we're going to do is put some glue on the heel and just spread it evenly. You want to work in small areas because it does dry kind of quickly to the surface. And then you're just going to start placing your rhinestones on until you've completely covered the area that you put glue on and then just keep repeating the process. I find it's really helpful if you try to make even rows, um, that way they are staggering together nicely. Otherwise when you get to the edge of between sections, then you might end up with weird gaps that are like a little too big or a little too small for one stone to fit into. All 
Alright guys, so here's one heel done. This took me about an hour and a half to complete, so I'm guessing this project's going to take a long time. So after you've done the heels, I like to outline the whole edge of the bottom sole and the top rim of your shoes and around any zippers or buckles or anything like that that you have. Just that way you can make sure that you're going to have a nice, even straight line across those edges. So now I'm just going to carefully do the same thing on the edge of my zippers. If you are going around zippers or buckles or things that you need to move, make sure you're not getting glue into the seams because then obviously it's not going to work properly. And once you are done outlining all of your edges and little knickknack and pieces on your shoes, you can just go ahead and start blocking in these larger areas. Just remember you want to work with a small section at a time because the glue will dry kind of quickly. So at the end of day one, I have finished both heels and started working on the side of one of the shoes, and now I'm going to go to bed. <sighs> Alright guys, here we go, day two. I spent a good six and a half hours working on them yesterday, and I got the heel of one shoe done and this much of this one. So, let's see how much we can do on day two. So again, I'm just working in small areas and I'm kind of starting where the sole is, outlining that and then building my way up over the front of the toe and then up the sides of the boots. Um, you can probably do this in any method you want, but you kind of want to start in one area and just keep going across from that one area so that way you're not getting weird splotchy seams where the rhinestones won't quite line up and you'll have extra spaces between them. Alright guys, so we are now closing in on around 5 p.m. on day two. I have been working on this pretty much all day, on and off, taking breaks, wandering around the house, making some snacks, playing with kittens, taking my dog outside. I feel like a really bad mommy because I accidentally left Callie out in the rain for 15 minutes, but I gave her treats when she came back in, so she's totally fine now, but I still feel bad. However, this is how far we have gotten. So we're getting there, slowly but surely, and I came up with this crazy idea that I don't think I want them to be completely red rhinestones all the way up. So I'm going to use some black rhinestones to go from the top and then kind of do some blendy thing in the middle, and uh, we're going to see how that works out. So it is now starting day three of our shoe project, and I got my little helper. Hopefully we can uh, finish up this shoe. Here's where we left off yesterday. Hello guys, it's now day four of working on this project, and I have one shoe with the red all covering the bottom, and the other one is almost there, I just need to do this little front part, and then we're going to start with the black on the top and work our way down and kind of blend them together. So, let's get back to work. So once again, I'm going to start by doing a nice even outline row across the top edge of the shoe, and then I will work my way down in even rows from that all the way around the top.
Alright guys, we are here in day five, and I have just started kind of figuring out the blend. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be something like this, where spotty red on the top, and then some spotty blacks on the bottom, and then it kind of becomes a one-to-one -one ratio there in the middle. So we will uh, keep going with that and see how it comes out. So to create the ombre effect between the two, I'm just going to start with my filling in with my blacks and then just adding some spotty reds wherever to kind of randomize the pattern um, going down and then add more red. So then you will end up with something kind of like this. Alright guys, day six here. So yesterday we did finish up one whole shoe. It looks amazing, and I'm so happy I decided to go with the ombre effect. So, today we're going to finish up this one. Fingers crossed we get it all done today, because I really do not need to spend more than a week on this project. Alright guys, so a little update midway through day 6. I have now finished the black border on the top of this boot, and next we'll start doing the ombre part in the middle. I might however run out of glue, because I'm almost out of E6000, so I um, guess we'll see how far I can get before I need to buy some more glue. While I was going through on the other shoe, I did figure out that it's actually easier if I just start by placing my randomized ones, and then filling in with the solid other color around it. Um, because the glue is still soft, you can kind of shift them around a little bit to make sure that they are still lining up in a nice kind of even pattern around, um, but I found that was a lot easier than kind of trying to randomize it as I went. Alright guys, so day 7 here. I did end up running out of glue last night. I got half of it all finished. So we just need to do the front side now today, and then we will be all done with this project, and I will never rhinestone boots ever again. We are almost there, probably have about a half an hour left, and then this project is complete. Forty-one hours later. One more time, let me show you what they looked like before we started, just in case you forgot. Oh my god, wow! Just look at all of that glitter and sparkle! Wow, I really feel like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. This is amazing. They're just so freaking shimmery. 
And with that, I will conclude this DIY tutorial of making these darling rhinestone boots. It was a lot of work, I'm not going to lie, but it was so totally worth it. But now that that's done, I'm going to go put these bad boys on and go out on the town. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see some more fun videos of me doing DIYs and fun craft projects. Until next time, I hope your day is as beautiful as yours.